Ricardo, my boy, he's back. Pff, I could cry. We've got the first driver change of the season and silly season is about to begin. Let's get into it. Nick DeVries, where did it all go wrong? I mean, I think it went wrong from the day he was signed, to be honest, because he was signed to a junior team as a 28 year old. And yes, Daniel Ricciardo's older, but he's part of that team structure already. Calm down. He's 28 years old. He's done his maturing. So he needed to come in on fire because if he didn't, well, it's what we've got now. He also came in with a huge pedigree. He was the Formula E champion. So bringing him into that Alpha Tower team seemed like, oh my God, this is an amazing step. You brought a proven winner, a proven champion into a junior team. He's going to thrash Sonoda and possibly get that Red Bull seat off Checker when he eventually crashes and burns like he's doing currently. But it's been the complete opposite. Sonoda has smashed De Vries out the park. It's actually been quite, like, horrific to watch. I mean, I love Yuki. He's a funny little dweller. I shouldn't say little, that's a bit derogatory. But he's funny and he's little. But he's done an incredible job this year with a crap car, let's face it. But De Vries has done absolutely nothing. So is he right to have lost his seat? Yeah, sure. Maybe a lot of people would say that he isn't because he's only had, what, 11 races. But when you actually think about it, he's 28 years old. He should be a lot better than he is because he's a proven champion already. He's clearly not very good at Formula One, which is why he hasn't had a chance beforehand. So Red Bull, in their ruthlessness, which we all love and cherish pulled the plug and they've got someone in that they know is an elite driver and he is an elite driver no matter what people say about them the mclaren years and the bloody renault years even though he was pretty decent when he drove for renault and he won a race in a mclaren he's an elite driver and will be able to drive that car and get points and mit oh. And importantly, get them off the bottom step of the standings at the minute, which means the least amount of money going to that team. What does it mean for Daniel Ricciardo? Well, I think he's now on a test run between him and Yuki Tsunoda for that second Red Bull seat. I don't think Sergio Perez is lasting the year. I really don't. He's been performing awfully on Saturdays, which has completely compromised his Sundays. Max Verstappen is holding up that Red Bull team at the minute. Sergio Perez is falling away. And like we just said, Red Bull love to be ruthless. They're not letting him stick around if they can get somebody who's going to get them points in that seat straight away. So now, over the next few races, we have a complete test over Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda for that Red Bull seat, and it's going to be fantastic, especially in a car that isn't made for the points. So it's really just who's going to be better than the other driver. Personally, I think it's going to be Daniel Ricciardo. He is an absolute legend. But we will see, Yuki Tsunoda is also a pretty decent driver. What does it mean for Formula 1 to have Daniel Ricciardo back? It means the world. It means the world. There are some drivers that it just doesn't matter what team they're on. You want to root for them. And Daniel Ricciardo is one of them. Because not only is he a really lovely, happy, funny guy, but he's also an excellent driver. And when you get that mix of people, it's just it just becomes someone that you want to root for, that you want to win. And Daniel Ricciardo is just that. Plus, marketing-wise, for Formula 1, he's amazing. He's one of the most loved drivers in the world. I think he's the, mo the most loved driver in America. I've read that somewhere. I don't know if that's just pulling things out my ass. But that is going to mean a lot to Stefano Dominica D D D D Dominicali. Because... The fact that you can have another driver that you can put on posters and make people more excited about the F1 and tuning in for the F1, buying like subscriptions and coming to the races, that just means so much. And to be able to have another one of those drivers is insane for Formula 1. So it's a really good move for Formula 1, an amazing move for the fans as well. Is this the start of Silly Season? <sighs> Fuck if I know, dude. Honestly, I'm so surprised that we've hardly heard anything this, this 
so far this season. Like, this seems to be the first bit of news that I've actually come out of Formula 1. A first bit of news that actually seems, like, interesting. Because before now, I've literally heard nothing. It's been deathly quiet in terms of Formula 1 news. It's more been about team principals fighting over whether they should have a start time to when they can work on next year's car. That's been about it. There's nothing really that's come out this season. So this might be the start or it might just be Red Bull in their ruthlessness, ruining everybody's quiet time and throwing in a little bit of drama, which in all fairness, I'm not the massive fan of Red Bull, but we do love them for a little bit of drama. Let's see how the next weeks unfold. I am rooting for my boy, Danny Rick. I think he is going to do amazing. The honey badger is back and we will see how it pans out. Leave your thoughts in the comments if you think Danny Rick is going to have a good season, a bad season, if he's going to get that Red Bull seat. Remember to like the video and please subscribe. We are trying to get to a thousand and your help would mean the world to us. Thank you very much. See you later.